Within the past century, the United States has produced 39 different heavyweight champions. We've grown accustomed to that old familiar voice of the ring announcer. For the winner by a unanimous decision and new heavyweight champion of the world. Yet in Great Britain, where prize fighting finds its roots, the past 100 years have given them little reason to cheer. There's a great tradition of boxing in this country. Unfortunately, we don't have too many good fighters these days. And we certainly haven't had too many good heavyweights. <laughs> the last undisputed British heavyweight champion was Bob Fitzsimmons in 1897. Not until the arrival of Lennox Lewis in 1992 would the British be able to claim another. But tonight's event takes on greater significance, as it marks the first time in history that two Englishmen have battled one another for a world heavyweight title. There are certain events in the sporting calendar in this country that are considered national events. There's Wimbledon tennis fortnight, there's the Royal Ascot race meeting, and there's the cup final, which is our equivalent to your Super Bowl. And this is on that level. It's quite something for any British-born fighter to get involved in the World Heavyweight Championship. And now suddenly, we've got one guy who actually is the world champion, WBC, and we've got the other guy who's already had two goes at it, and is going to have a third. So, it's big, it's big news here. Lewis's stunning destruction of Donovan Razor Ruddock last Halloween night convinced the British boxing public that Lennox was a legitimate heavyweight contender. That victory put Lewis next in line to pick up the WBC title when Riddick Bowe relinquished it. The title has made Britain proud, and they welcome Lewis with open arms. But now, because he's successful, and because he's the one guy who's brought us the World Heavyweight Championship, he's become very popular, and I don't, <laughs> I don't see why not. <laughs> Every time I walk on the streets of, of England or anywhere I go, people are always saying, well, when are you and Frank Bruno going to get it together? And I say, well, okay, let's, let's answer this question. This is what the British public wanted to see for such a long time. It's all, all of a sudden coming together. So now the British look forward to pitting their recently crowned heavyweight champion, Lennox Lewis, against their beloved challenger, Frank Bruno. And despite the fact he's never won a world title, Bruno reigns as one of England's most popular athletes and celebrities. An SOS at HQ revealed a VIP with an OB tucking into a baked potato without HP. Everything's okay with HP. There is a lot of love and affection for me, but I don't get excited about that because like, it can be here today and gone tomorrow. It's been here for a very long time, but I don't want to lose myself. My feet are staying on the ground, and then we'll maintain to stay on the ground. Even after his knockout at the hands of Mike Tyson in 1989, Bruno returned to his country a hero. And you, Richard Steele, have seen enough. And Terry Lawless throws in the towel simultaneously. You know, we are quaint people in this country. Uh, we are known to love good losers. And Frank is a good loser. He's fought twice for the world title, as you know, and he's lost both times. This historic matchup will be one of the biggest events in British boxing history, equivalent in stature here to American events like Leonard Hearns, Tyson Spinks, and Ali versus Frazier. Though both fighters hail from London, moving the fight 130 miles west to Cardiff, Wales, could produce a small advantage for the heavy underdog, Frank Bruno. Frank, Frank Bruno, most of his fights are in London. He doesn't like leaving London and fighting outside of London. But I look at this fight as being a fight for Britain. So therefore, putting it in Wales is like a middle point. They have to bring it to Wales, but the, <laughs> the thing you don't know, I've got more fans in Wales than I have got in that part of the country than I have got in London, if you know what I'm saying. Hosting its first ever heavyweight title bout, Art of Arms, a rugby stadium with a capacity of about 40,000, is no stranger to superstar events. Lewis versus Bruno follows in a long line. The whole nation has been looking forward to this fight for months. Even people who are the slightest bit interested in boxing know it's taking place. And those who aren't at the stadium to actually see it live will be watching it on television and will be listening to it, the commentary on the radio. It's a long-awaited matchup between heavyweight heroes, the first ever of its kind in Great Britain. Sky TV, the British cable network, expects tonight's event to be one of its highest-rated programs ever. And regardless of the outcome, this event will mark a special place in British boxing history. After all, like Haley's Comet, it could well be another hundred years before boxing fans here enjoy a similar night.
We bring it back to ringside, and coming up from Cardiff, Wales, the WBC World Heavyweight Championship battle between champion Lennox Lewis and challenger Frank Bruno getting his third shot at a heavyweight crown. Now let's go up to ring announcer Mike Goodall to begin an evening of memorable festivities. The Marquis of Queensbury Rules brought boxing into modern times exactly 101 years ago in 1892. Tonight, history is to be made because for the first time ever, two British boxers will contest a World Heavyweight Championship. you be confused by that graphic keep in mind that Lewis was awarded the WBC heavyweight championship by that governing body after Riddick Bowe relinquished it rather than to fight him in a mandatory challenge that's why Bruno has a chance to become the first British heavyweight to win a title in the ring he's had two previous chances July of 1986 when he led Tim Witherspoon well into the bout, but tired and suffered a TKO in the 11th round. And February of 1989, when he rocked Mike Tyson with a left hook in the first round, but later succumbed under a barrage of Tyson lefts and suffered a TKO in the fifth. Nobody does pomp and circumstance better than the British. I see this, Jim. You can't beat it. A heavyweight championship fight, it means so much to so many people. circumstance like the British and when he's on a roll there are few who can be more pompous than Frank <laughs> but I was in his dressing room uh, earlier unexpectedly and found him to be very relaxed uh, warming up working up a sweat so far until the fight starts he's living up to his promises of the evening number one. 
the man with the red cap on who carried the British flag into the ring, now holding his fists in the air behind Bruno, is Matthew Duarez, who is Lennox Lewis's half-brother. He has worked for Frank Bruno for 11 years. There's the record for Bruno. Three losses, all of them by knockout, all of them to American fighters. They were to James Bone Crusher Smith, Tim Witherspoon, and Mike Tyson. And George, if he was relaxed before, it's hard for me to imagine how he could remain thoroughly relaxed amid all of that grandiose show. <laughs> you know, you take off for three years as he's done, you, you think about, boy, I should have appreciated the limelight. You can see now he's bathing himself in it. He's having the most joyful day of his life right now, Frank Bruno. You saw the statistic indicating that Bruno has been in the ring for only 21 rounds total since his loss to Tyson on February 25, 1989. The British love to reflect that he had Tyson in serious trouble with that left hook in the first round. It may not have been as bad as all that, but surely one year later, when he watched Buster Douglas pull the trick against Tyson, he must have had a few fleeting moments of thought that it could have been me. And now back to ring announcer Mike Goodall. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis! for Canada in 1988 when he knocked out Riddick Bowe in the gold medal match at Seoul. He has spoken many times of his desire for another fight with Bowe. Bowe talks endlessly about the possibility of a revenge match, but it now appears that that match may not take place until summer of 1994 because after this, if he gets by Frank Bruno, Lewis is still expected to go for another big money bout with American Tommy Morrison. I guess you can call him the first multinational heavyweight champion. A Brit, a Canadian, who trains in America and goes back to Jamaica to get in touch with his roots. And to fight fans, he is now a major enigma. No heavyweight has looked better in the last couple of years than Lewis with his stunning destruction of Razor Ruddock in 216 seconds in Earl's Court last October. But in the eyes of American boxing writers, few heavyweight champions have looked worse than Lewis in his 12-round decision title defense over Tony, Tony Tucker May 8 of this year. Well, that's something I, I don't agree with. As I said earlier, that, that was a function of the unrealistically high expectations of him after that knockout. Many, many great champions have had fights that just as tough and just as boring as that fight sometimes was. Uh, it was a victory. He won it once uh, on a one-sided uh, decision, knocked the man down twice, a guy who's hard to fight, Tony Tucker. He had a good fight, but it was it was not a dramatic fight. It was not what everybody was looking for, which is a combination of uh, Dempsey, Lewis, Ali, and whoever. A year ago, he was as warm and outgoing as any boxing personality you could find. Yesterday, in our meeting with him, he was tight-lipped, almost sullen, seemingly uptight about this task. And now he enters the ring to what must be seen as a derisive greeting from what is clearly a partisan pro-Bruno crowd. 
it's hard for the crowd to let go of the fact that they're used to rooting for noble losers. If he wins, they're going to have to start rooting for a winner. <laughs> and here is Lennox's record. He remains unbeaten and untied as a professional. 23 wins, no losses, no draws, 19 KOs. Note worthily within the last couple of years, both Levi Billups and Tony Tucker have gone the full distance with Lewis, though he knocked Tucker down twice, a fighter who had never previously been decked. Dale of the tape, and you can see that Lennox Lewis has a bit of a height advantage, but otherwise they are fairly close in dimensions. Bruno, nine pounds heavier, three years older, the reach similar as they go into the ring. Punch that numbers, Larry. These numbers are off of recent fights, and you can see that uh, Bruno has been the more active fights fighter, largely because uh, Lewis, in fighting Tony Tucker, a good defensive fighter, is not as active as he normally is. And jabs, Bruno has thrown more jabs. The unusual rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Lennox Lewis and Frank Bruno will box tonight using the rules of the World Boxing Council. 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count. No three knockdown rule. You can be saved by the bell in the last round only. Only the referee can stop the fight. And Jim, if a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, and that cut causes the fight to be stopped, we'll go to the scorecards after three rounds have been completed. Before that, it's a technical draw. If Mickey Van, the referee, stops the fight due to inclement weather beyond the third round, we go to the scorecards. Before the third round, it's no contest. A further word on Mickey Van. If you follow the sport, you have learned his name recently. He is one of the two men whose preposterous scorecards in San Antonio deprived Pernell Whitaker of his much-deserved victory over Julio Cesar Chavez. Larry? Uh, giving this man this, uh, this choice assignment, in my, my mind, is like uh, naming Jesse James to the Federal Reserve Board. Agreed. Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Mike Goodall for the pre-fight introductions. The officials appointed for this contest by the World Boxing Council are the supervisor in charge, Sir David Hopkin, the British Boxing Board of Control Supervisor, Mr. John Morris, the timekeeper this evening, Mr. Ivor Campbell. The judges at ringside are Mr. Tony Castellano of Las Vegas, USA, and Mr. Jerry Roth of Las Vegas, USA, and Mr. Adrian Morgan of Carleon in Wales. The man in charge of the action tonight, officiating in his 23rd World Championship, Mr. Mickey Van of Leeds, England. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, this contest is promoted by Frank Maloney for Panics Promotions and uh, Main Events in association with National Promotions, who proudly present History in the Making and is sponsored by Cardiff Bay Developments. This is a contest of 12 three-minute rounds of boxing to decide the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. In the blue corner, wearing white shorts with red trim from Essex, England, the challenger ranked undisputedly number five by all world bodies a former aba heavyweight champion whose professional record from 39 fights reads 36 wins three losses 35 wins coming by way of ko the former undefeated european heavyweight champion frank bruno
national record. He is undefeated in 23 contests, 19 by way of KO. The former undefeated British Commonwealth and European heavyweight champion. He comes to the ring tonight as the undisputed WBC heavyweight champion of the world. the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. T-shirt on, as you point out, under those warm-ups, George Foreman, and he's waited longer in the ring than has Lennox Lewis. Do you think that could have an effect? The first major mistake. You don't enter the ring in this kind of weather with an under, without an undershirt. Your body's too cold. You can't react as good as you would ordinarily. I don't like that. And we have word from our truck that it appeared Lewis was waiting it out in his dressing room for exactly the purpose of hanging Bruno out to dry in the ring. Now, meanwhile, we'll point out there's an enormous premium on winning in the first three rounds because, remember, Mickey Van, as the referee, will have the discretion to stop the fight any time after three rounds if it's raining, and they would go to the scorecards and declare one fighter or the other a winner. So there is an enormous pressure on both fighters to do their best in the first three rounds. Also, as you look at Mickey Van, we'll remind you that Lennox Lewis had surgery in May of this year, immediately following the Tucker fight, to repair a tendon in the pinky finger of his right hand. So we'll all be watching early to see if Lewis throws that big right hand, and if he does and lands it, will he then throw it again? If this fight is half as good as the commercial that promoted it, we'll have a hell of a fight. <laughs> Bruno pounding his fists together to jack himself up. Mickey Van pulls them together, and round one begins. Lewis starts with a jab and a wild right while ducking his head, then lands a left hook. That first right hand was an over right hand, and so he is touchy about throwing that right hand, Lewis. And you have said to me, George, that you don't believe he can be fully healed this rapidly after the surgery. Not at all, but you got two or three good ones whether you're healed or not. But if the fight wears on with a lot of right hands, he could be hurt quick. His hand hurts. Lewis missing with the right hand. So far, he seems more conscious of throwing the jab, which he didn't land effectively enough to satisfy his handlers against Tony Tucker. As long as Frank Bruno hand up, Lennox Lewis is not going to waste right hand. It was in his interest to keep that left hand up as long as he can. Lewis landed a left hook while backing up, no major effect. Right hand over the top as well, short. So far, Bruno not coming at Lewis to try to get anything going inside. A lot of people thought that Bruno would try to skirmish with him at close quarters early. It hasn't happened so far. Lennox Lewis is playing the part of the counterpuncher. Lewis slipping on the canvas and now trying to come back with the left. Frank Bruno should be the experienced fighter and let this fight go for two or three rounds. He should not try to rush things. Lennox Lewis is in his interest to hit him hard and back up and draw Frank Bruno into his right hand. Bruno is starting to drop his left a little too much now. And so far, the boxing gods are blessing us with dry skies. There is no rain, and we haven't been able to say that unequivocally in Wales for about a week. First good right hand. It landed just a bit. Didn't seem to save Bruno. But Bru Bruno is starting a little rhythm with his left hand. He drops it and picks it up. Drops it, picks it up. Lennox Lewis is going to get the timing of it and throw it like a baseball right hand like a baseball pitcher. Bruno 
Bruno lands a jab. Lewis looking a little bit ungainly and out of sync early. Much the way he looked in the closing rounds of the Tucker fight after decking Tucker for the second time in the eighth round. Bruno is using the old keep your mouth balanced, keep a jab coming whether it's hard or not, keep your mouth balanced. It's a good strategy. Neither man with a clear advantage in round one as it comes to a close. And you'll hear a big roar from the crowd. I thought that was a very tense round by Lennox Lewis. Went a little right hand crazy in the first half of the round. Doesn't seem to have his bearing. Hasn't got Bruno measured yet. Both fighters relying on the jab in round one. Only 18 of 90 punches thrown were power punches. A lot of them wild overhand rights by Lennox Lewis. Now Bruno pumping the jab early and going to the body in round number two. Lewis still looking tentative. Good, good right body. to the body. Yeah, good body shot, George. I'm surprised to see Lennox Lewis land body punches. You didn't expect that from him. Well, he barely threw any body punches against Tucker, and he acknowledged that was one area in which he would have to be improved tonight. Good right hand by Bruno this time. Bruno appears the more self-assured fighter early on, George. And I think he should keep him close to the ropes because he's not sure, assured of himself as Lennox Lewis is when he's next to the, uh, the ropes. He needs a lot of room to throw that right hand. Another good jab by Bruno and back to the body. Crowd chanting Bruno, Bruno, Bruno. Pepe Correa, Lewis's American trainer, one-time trainer of Sugar Ray Leonard, keeping up a stream of instructions from just over my left shoulder. You can probably hear him through my microphone. Good left hook by Bruno. The best punch of the bout, that left hook by Bruno, and it backs Lewis up. Round two, a good one so far for the challenger. Bruno is constantly, uh, Lennox Lewis is constantly looking for one good right hand. Good counter puncher, but he shouldn't wait all night. Things just don't happen good. Lewis tying Bruno up. Crowd went wild for that left right attempt by Bruno. He was hurt. Lennox Lewis was hurt. <laughs> hurt again. Another good left by Bruno. So far, Bruno is beating Lennox Lewis to the punch. And this is a shock to ringside experts who thought of Lewis as a heavy favorite in the bout. Bruno should be careful because Lewis only needs one shot to have him getting up off the canvas. Another good right hand by Lewis to the body. Bruno Another with a left. Traded punches. Lewis landed the right, but Bruno keeps going at it. And he's starting to land those punches behind the head. The fight is turning the way Bruno wants it to turn now into a slugfish. And here's the challenge for 140 pound Mickey Van to pull these two large, strong heavyweights apart. Now Van is going to give a lecture. Worst mistake that could have been made by Lewis was to get into this kind of fight. He doesn't need it. It's Bruno who needs it. In recent fights, Bruno has begun to use some of the brawling tactics that Tyson used against him. Hitting with the elbows, holding behind the head. 
what Frank Bruno is doing is trying to take away, and he's doing it successfully. Lennox Lewis's best weapon, the right hand. Much as a good football defense tries to take away the best weapon of an offense. Can Lennox Lewis beat him another way? tell you, try the help. When you do, let it go. But don't be dissatisfied with the right hand. Come back with the left hook from round three. All right? Keep the right hands in the body for me, too. Round three. Corner, 10 seconds. There you see that little punch up at close quarters. Much to Frank Bruno's advantage, he is trying to rattle Lewis. Round three begi begins, and in the three-round battle, it is Bruno for the moment who holds the upper hand. But between rounds, George, you pointed out the swelling above Frank Bruno's left eye. Which could start to tail in a minute because he's, n he's not going to have good vision at this point. You lose your vision with Lennox Lewis, you're going to get knocked out. Lewis rallying to begin round three. Caught Bruno a little bit by surprise. Lewis is wanting a cut now. He's looking for a cut. He's hoping to cut this man, which he shouldn't. He should try to go for the knockout. Good body by, punch by Bruno. Carl the Tooth Williams was able to cut Bruno over the left eye, but Bruno nevertheless went on to score the TKO. That mouse above Bruno's left eye is in exactly the same location where the cut appeared against Williams. Good right here by Bruno. Right hand. Bruno has Lewis in serious trouble. Let's see if Lennox knows how to hold on. And Bruno leaped in at him the way he didn't leap at Mike Tyson after he hit him. Lewis still in trouble. Bruno pounding away to the body. That right hand is one of the biggest punches Lennox Lewis has ever taken in his career. Now, this is the time for Bruno to get close and stay close. He's dead. making a mistake by staying so far away from him at this point. Right hand over the top by Lewis. Breaking the momentum just a moment. Lewis appears to have his wits back about him, George. You go through a training camp of throwing right hand off to the side, as Lewis has been doing. You're not going to be able to land a good straight right hand. Bruno trying to finish. Remember, he had Tyson in trouble in round one. Couldn't get him out of there. Think about Lennox Lewis, he hasn't got a defense, he just doesn't know how to fight when he's fighting from behind. He's not a catch-up fighter. Lennox Lewis fighting with his hands low, doesn't know what to do. Lewis with a combustible right hand to stop Bruno in his tracks. Here comes Frank again with the jab. Hands down. People have been telling Lewis, comparing it with Muhammad Ali, the worst mistake in the world. You win and you lose at the same time. Bruno tentative now when he could have been trying to exploit the advantage he discovered earlier in the round. It was a huge right hand that had Lennox Lewis severely stunned. But now, Bruno appears to have let Lewis out of the forest. He got him drunk. He wasn't able to mug it. Therefore, with the time, relax. When you get anywhere near the rope, the hands got to come up. All right? Now, we got to stop putting some hurt on this guy. And we have to do it with the right hand. Don't go right hand crazy. Just give me some jab on this guy to back him up. Then drop the right hand, and I want the hook when you come back. Finish the combination. You're trying to punch one at a time. Don't do that. Give me some combination. Back this guy up. You notice how Bruno is keeping his hands high to take away that right hand, and he lands his own right hand. Bruno is asking questions of the champion he has never been asked before. How will he respond to a real war? And Bruno leaped in behind that to seize any advantage he might have had. Good work.
Frank Bruno. And gentlemen, as those replays rolled, Lewis's manager, Frank Maloney, looked in over my left shoulder, watched them, and said, oh, in response to the right hand that stunned his fighter. Now, you heard Pepe Correa asking Lewis to jab, back Bruno up, and then drop the right over, and then come back with the left hook. Let's see if Lennox was able to listen. Right now, he is the one who is eating Bruno's jab. Two tries with the right, both of them wild and missing. He went right hand crazy against Tucker on those occasions when he had him in trouble and wasn't able to land. Bruno should be diving into the body right now. For some reason, he's headhunting a little more than he ought to. The body is wide open for Bruno. Stiff jabs by Bruno, but all of them upstairs, as George points out. Lewis, lazy with the left jab and dropping his hand as he pulls it back. I think Frank's going to unleash one of those rights. Lewis is starting to get his rhythm. He's waiting for a good right hand, and he's got a good rhythm going there. At any time Bruno gets careless, he can be floored. Bruno still the busier of the two fighters. The first left hook. But he lunged Lewis. with it a little bit, George. Didn't have the good rhythm. Too much lunging. But it was a good, good left hook, and it's going to take a lot out of Bruno. Bruno has been the surer-footed fighter. If the rain starts to fall, that will become yet another advantage for him. Good right hand by Lewis, although he jumped in with it. We are past three rounds, so this Good is now jab. an official championship fight. Pumping that jab, George. Lewis is waiting for just one right hand. He believes in his right hand that much. A little body punches by Bruno looks like nothing, but may mean a lot if this fight goes beyond six or seven rounds. Another right hand over the top. This is for Lewis. Pepe Correa yelling, look at that eye. Hit it, hit it. Bruno's eye swelling more badly as the fight goes on. Now, Lennox Lewis jab is getting a little better. Another right hand over the top. And that right hand hurt Lennox Lewis. The side of his hand, he touched with his glove. Right hand is sore. The pinky finger is bothering him, right, George? It started to hurt him. I saw him grab his trunk. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored? Jim, four rounds to nothing, 40 to 36, Frank Bruno. I tell you, Jim, I can't believe this. The heavyweight champion in the world, in my eyes, is running away. Frank Bruno is taking it to him. Lennox Lewis is doing nothing more than pouring with the left hand. He pours it out. He misses the right hand constantly. He throws his right hand like a girl. It's all Frank Bruno. I'll tell you, it's a very poor performance so far for a heavyweight champion. Frank Bruno is quickly taking it right to Lewis. Come on, get it out. I hate to disagree with you, Harold. I gave the last round to Lewis. I thought he landed 12 or 15 good jabs, and Bruno's right eye could be in trouble soon. Left eye. Left eye, excuse me. Round five begins. And Lewis begins by raking Bruno's left eye with the jab. Bruno now wild with the right hand, and I think you're right, Larry. I think the eye is affecting Bruno's rhythm, and it's soon gonna get to his confidence. Lewis turns to Mickey Van and says, don't let him hold me behind the head. Lennox Lewis is cocking that right hand just like a gun. A bad habit of Lewis is loading up the right hand. He throws it so hard, though. Sometimes it's worth cocking up. <laughs> All 
he needs is one good right hand. He can turn this fight totally around. Now Lewis is blocking Bruno's jab from time to time with the right hand, and if the pinky finger is bothering him, that has to hurt too. It's hurting him. You can believe that. I've seen that right hand drop to the waist a few times. That hurts him more now. That right hand is hurt. But he almost landed the killer combination, the one that put Roddick on the canvas in the first round. Right hand lands over the top for Bruno. Lewis backs up into the ropes again. In the ring is no place to ask for mercy. They won't give it to you. Now Lewis is hurt and Bruno is not taking advantage of it. Let him get too much life. Lewis still tentative, seemingly wary of Bruno's power. Bruno remembering to go to the body there, and he gets a left hook on the chin as his reward. Bruno better keep that left hand up. Whatever he does, keep that left hand up. I don't know why Lewis is not throwing more left, left hook. Lewis isn't doing much of anything right now, George, but there's a jab. A Lennox left. just not very busy in there. A left hook could take him over the top. Bruno still beating the champion to the punch time and time again. Good right hand by Bruno. Good left jab by Lewis doesn't follow up one punch at a time for the champion sometimes a double jab there it was that right hand cannot take that minute missed punches and those right hands are starting to hurt Lennox Lewis hand he has to rest it every time he throws it like that he's got to rest it you got it down George every time he throws the bright he stops punching for the next 10 seconds Loading up, loading up. Bruno puts him in the corner and misses with the right over the top. Lennox Lewis as he tries to spear Bruno in the eyes and he does so successfully. He'll have to do it a lot more if he's going to get get this fight going in his direction. Frank Bruno has never lost a fight on a cut. Mickey Van says take the grease off of Lewis's face and now we see that there is a cut above Lennox's Lewis, his left eye. Excuse me, getting excited about this. That is Lennox Lewis's left eye, which is cut on the upper lid. So now his eye becomes a factor, just as Bruno's is. Right hand landed for Lewis. Didn't stun Bruno. Over the top, missing, and then losing his balance as he goes to the body. His gloves should be washed out, wiped off now. You could really... It's getting colder here. Temperature probably dropping below 50 degrees outside the rinks. The fighters have the benefit of the ring lights, which warms it up by about 10 degrees. Crowd chanting, Bruno, Bruno. Lewis missing wildly and holding on. Bruno pumping him inside with short right hand. Lennox Lewis is having a lot of problem with his vision at this point, too. Probably because he hasn't been in this kind of trouble before in a fight. Don't know how to just sit back and prove. Get your vision back, so to speak. Right hand landed for Bruno as he pulled away. Left eye closing, right eye wide open as Bruno looks for every opportunity. Monumental upset in the offing here in Carter. Bruno is starting to drop his left hand a little too much, though. Looking for a good left hook. If it becomes a contest of cut men, 
The key men are Al Gavin in Lewis's corner and George Francis, the trainer of Frank Bruno. They'll be the men with the inswell who'll be trying to stop the bleeding. Lewis coming alive a little bit here, George. Well, he's starting to turn into a dog fight, which would favor Bruno because Bruno can just back up and protect his lead. Uppercut, a right uppercut. And it was a good one which backed Bruno up and it was thrown on the break, which was a clever move for Lewis who realizes this fight is getting out of hand. Lewis is starting to even land punches below the belt. Referee Mickey Van appearing for the moment to lose control. And Bruno is always faded in the latter rounds. So if he can keep up his spirit. Remember that Bruno led on the scorecards late against Bone Crusher Smith was TKO'd in the 10th. Led on the scorecards late against Tim Witherspoon was TKO'd in the 11th. This is the first time that Bruno has been the experienced fighter in the world traveler. I referred to earlier ended with him saying one lump or two a lot of lumps in this fight more than one or two and they're using the end swell in Bruno's corner to work on his left eye but I didn't see Al Gavin doing anything with Lewis's left eye which is swelling just as much on the upper lid oh a terrific Whoa. left hand and a right over the top by Bruno who takes command again as this round begins Lennox Lewis has got to respect Bruno and he could have a different fight. He just doesn't have any respect. Lewis in trouble in the corner and lands a sensational left hook. What a comeback by Lewis. Now let's see if he can finish. He's Bruno got in serious trouble. He's got him now if he can finish. Right hand over the top. It was a left hook that turned this around and a frozen Frank Bruno is there taking punishment. And Mickey Van is going to stop it. No, he's not going to stop it. He is lecturing Lewis, holding and, hitting. Mickey, holding and hitting. Mickey Van has given Bruno a chance to recover. Can Bruno recover? He's going down. It's amazing that Bruno stands up, and now Mickey Van stops the fight. It was a one-punch comeback. Lennis Lewis, desperately behind on the scorecards, produced a sensational left hook. And who would suspect a left hook of all the punches? Frank Bruno didn't, and that was his downfall. You pointed out that Bruno took away the right hand, and you said, Larry, the question was, could Lennox find another way to win? He found the left hook. Did he find it? it? A, and it was a left hook that reminded me of the one in Tokyo that Buster Douglas put on Mike Tyson. It was I a left hook that reminded me of the one that Evander Holyfield used to turn around his fight with Burt Cooper in Atlanta a couple of years ago. You remember earlier I said that Frank Bruno was asking Lennox Lewis questions he had never been asked before. We have seen Bruno before be very tough in the first half of a fight. Lewis answered the question, and he answered it affirmatively. He, he stayed in there, he found a way to win, he had faith in his power. When you got power, you're always in the fight. Right, George? All right. <laughs> Let's take a look at how Bruno hurt Lewis early in the round. Here is Bruno with the overhand right that put Lewis in trouble in the corner. 
At this moment, it appeared that the question would be, could Lennox Lewis survive the round? And there's the punch. George, they always say a fighter is never more dangerous than when, when he's, he's in hurt. trouble. That's right. All night I thought a left hook could do it. You said it. Now what about the finishing job that Lewis did, George? He never let up. He got hungry. He, he saw the guy was in trouble. He never let up, which is something that you can only get when you're youth. You go for it. You don't care if you get tired. You just go for the knockout. For six rounds, it was surely the worst performance of Lennox Lewis's yeah. career. But now it became the guttiest performance of Lewis's career. I mean, he got in there like a champion should, and he finished this guy out. The ref yeah. stopping him, didn't discourage him. him. Nothing stopped him. And the final note of congratulation to the challenger, incidentally, because Frank Bruno produced an effort of which British boxing fans, those who have loved him for so many years, can surely be proud. He showed muscle and stomach and heart until he ran into that one unforgettable left hook. He's, he's translated the role of plucky loser into millions of dollars. And this won't hurt him either. Not in Britain. You see trainer George Francis jumping through the ring at the end to rescue his fighter who wouldn't go down. We've seen Bruno in this posture before against Tim Witherspoon and against Mike Tyson. It could not be done by the boxer. The puncher had to come out and do it. Youth and power, it's wonderful. Well, you know, you called this one cold, George. You said to us before the fight that Lewis would need to win with punching power. And frankly, I was skeptical because I'm thinking, hey, he's the more skillful boxer. If it's going to be a decision, he's going to win. But surely, surely on all legitimate, credible cards, Bruno was well ahead on points at the time when Lewis launched that left hook. From the moment he threw it, the big question would th was then, how long would it take for him to get Bruno out of there? Bruno should never have gone for the knockout. That's the story. Well, but, Be but, content with winning by points. Don't go for the good stuff. And he did, and it cost. But once a puncher, always a puncher. Well, and George, always a puncher. He's, he's, he's been criticized for five years for not following up on the advantage or slight advantage he had over Tyson. He was determined to follow up. I cannot fault a fighter when he thinks he has the other fighter in trouble for jumping on him. Ten seconds of the seventh round. The referee has stopped the contest. The undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis! A memorable night. And the crowd got every pound sterling worth. Great fight. Great fight. And the bigger cheers are for Bruno. And let's take one more look, George Foreman, at the left hook that set it all up. Lewis in trouble as he backs into the corner. Bruno on top, searches for that knockout after he's wasted himself. Here it comes. All the times on the button, a right hand punch is doing it with a left hook. Bruno was never able to re fully recover from that shot. Look at him holding Lewis behind the head to try to gain an advantage. He misses the left, and Lewis lands right on the point of the chin. And Lewis let up. That's the thing you get when you're fighting a young fighter. They do not let up when they hurt you. Bruno has been criticized for having a weak chin. I have to surmise that that left hook would have put just about any heavyweight in history on Queer Street. That was one of the best left hooks ever thrown in the heavyweight division, especially by a big heavyweight. Right on time. Makes you want to holler and throw up both your hands. I'm looking at a hall of fame of left hooks in my mental memory now. Mike Tyson against Carl The Truth Williams in Atlantic City. The one that knocked Williams out, 91 seconds of the first round. Think about the Joe Frazier and Jimmy Ellis years yeah, and years ago. There have been a lot of good ones. Let's take a look at final punch stat numbers, and you'll see the edge that Bruno enjoyed through 1 minute 10 seconds of the seventh round in number of punches thrown, in number of punches landed. Lewis's connect percentage 
was going up as the bout got longer. As Bruno tired, his defense was beginning to ebb away. Early on, it was one-sided in Frank Bruno's favor. You have to suspect that Lewis was beginning to turn the tide. And now, <laughs> Violet, Lennox Lewis's mother, saying goodnight to George Foreman, politely, as she <laughs> leaves the ring. She's a, she's a star, no she doubt about it. She is a champ. It. She is an undisputed champion herself. Boy, what a son she's got. And she had sons in both corners tonight. Her elder son, Matthew Juarez, has worked for Frank Bruno for 11 years. And a third son, Dennis Lewis, said to me yesterday, hey, it's blood, it's in the family, we love him before the fight, we will love him when the fight is over, win or lose. These two fighters didn't like each other. Frank Bruno was greatly motivated. He says that Lennox Lewis, using the lingo of the street here, had called him an Uncle Tom. He wanted revenge, and for six rounds, he got it. But Lennox Lewis, with the guttiest comeback of his still-developing career, turned it around with the left hook and won the fight, and now Larry Merchant stands by with the champ. Larry. Lennox, uh, congratulations on the fight. What turned it around for you? I think I started to get warmed up. I, I, got, on I got off to a slow start, and then... Finally, as the rounds went on, I started to get warmed up, and he started to slow down. Are you saying you were cold in there be because of this chill in the air? Yeah, I was a bit cold. Even he was cold because I didn't see no sweat on his body. I was trying to keep some sweat on my body, but it just took me a while, and then I finally got together. All right. Were you Take us through the fight. Were you surprised at, at how effective he was at what he was trying to do? early in the fight, the first three or four rounds. He was very effective. Actually, he's a lot better than I thought he was. You know, he came in terrific shape, and he came looking like he was going to try and, you know, pull it out. But, you know, I had full confidence in my own ability. It looked like he was trying to take away your right hand by holding his hands high, and that that frustrated or confused you for a while. Not really, because he must have forgot that I had a terrific left hook. And uh, that's when I, th I realized that after... He started blocking my right hand. I started to go to the body with the right hand, and then I said to myself, I'm going to come around with the hook and let him see my hook. All right, let's take a look at that uh, last round when Bruno hurt you or seemed to hurt you and then try to press his advantage. Describe what you see. Well, he thought I, he had me hurt. I, actually, I just lost my foot in, and I realized that I could see every punch coming, and I was blocking him. He was still hitting me behind the head, but then I just whipped out with my, my wicked left hook and caught him. As soon as I seen him hurt, I just, you know, pounced on top of him. I just really wanted to land one more punch, and I knew I would have had him like I did. The uppercut really hurt him right there. And I came with a hook again. And I knew, I knew once you have Bruno hurt, he's lost all stability. Are you saying that because of his reputation and what's happened to him in his big fights before that you felt that he would go sooner or later? Definitely. You know, I realized that he was slowing down as we got, got into the later rounds. And then he really did. And that's when I used my speed towards my bat. Now, Mickey Van stopped you there and gave him a chance to recover. What did he say to you? He said that I was holding. And I felt, oh, geez, stop. Okay. I just wanted to get right back at him <laughs> before he regained his consciousness and take him out of there. Were, were you, how frustrated were you in the first three or four rounds? It seemed that you're right. You were throwing a lot of right hands. You couldn't land it. Then you stopped throwing the right. We thought that perhaps your right was hurting you. Was it hurting you? No, my right hand felt really good. Like I said, he's been studying me from day one because Bruno, you know, retired after Tyson. And then he was just studying me all, all the way up. And he was watching all my advantages. And he was protecting against the right hand. But he must have forgot about the left hook. Is this the hardest fight emotionally and physically you have had to date? It was. It was really hard because it was like two countrymen. You know, I had the pr a lot of pride at stake. And it was for, right now, the, the country's divided. Now it has to unite behind their champion. Do you, f do you feel that you answered a question about you of how you would respond in a really tough fight with you perhaps not having the best part of it? W were you looking forward to having to answer that question? Yes, you know, a lot of people out there always, there's always going to be a lot of doubts out there about whether Bruno, whether if Lennox gets hurt, what would he do? And then, you know, I, I answered that question. No question about that. How do you feel about fighting Riddick Bo now? Do you, how, do you feel that you can d deal with his great skills? What great skills. He made his name off of Holyfield. 
He boxed two opponents. Now he's boxing Holyfield again. Why? He doesn't want to face any other heavyweight out there. So uh, give us your feelings as you come out of this fight, which was tougher for four or five rounds than a lot of people uh, anticipated. Well, all I have to say to the people, I pick good opponents, guys that are going to give me a uh, run for my money. I'm not going in there to look for any pushovers. And, you know, I, I answer the questions that were asked. Thank you very much. Lennox Lewis, oh, still the oh, WBC oh. champion. Back to you, Jim. All right, Larry, thanks very much. Now, George, based on what we saw of Lennox Lewis tonight, let's match him up against a couple.